All right, folks. Uh, welcome to uh, session number seven. So today we're going to be going over uh, briefly the slides that we did in the lecture. Uh, I'm going to take a look at some of the responses that I've gotten to the uh, lecture exercise uh, evaluating the evaluations. Uh, I'm also going to take a step backward and take a look at the uh, we're going to take a look at the EMP evaluation so we can derive some stuff that we can pull from that. Uh, and uh, we'll also, as usual, take some questions from you guys so that uh, everybody's got everything clear as far as these evaluation essays go. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So starting off, what makes a good evaluation? Some elements that will make or break your evaluation essay. So this includes strong criteria. Is, is it clear to the reader why your criteria is important in determining your subject quality? Are your criteria able to be met by your or any subject? Are you setting the criteria at a reasonable level, or are you setting it too high? Okay. Uh, acknowledgement of biases. Excuse me. Are you willing to accept that some things you judge as quality are based on your own personal biases? Can you move past those biases and create a fair evaluation? Knowledge of the subject. Do you have enough information to make a measured evaluation of your subject? Have you done enough with the subject? Watched, read, experienced it in a great enough quantity that you can anticipate all of the elements that would contribute to an evaluation of it. Okay? Pretty much what we're talking about here with all of these. First off, are you uh, rating it against criteria that is reasonable? Two, are you acknowledging that there may be some inherent uh, mindset you have that may be influencing what, whether you think something's good or bad based on those biases. Third, do you know enough about the subject to give a fair evaluation of it? Do some idea generation, look at some examples. So in the lecture, this was a journal exercise that I asked you guys to take about 30 minutes to do. Okay. Uh, so the exercise, in case you didn't do it, write about three or four potential subjects for your evaluation. These could be anything ranging from films to television shows to books or experiential subjects like hotels or parks. Okay, three or four are possible subjects uh, for evaluation. Uh, for each one of those, I want you to write about these four items. One, how often have you experienced a potential subject? Okay, so how many times have you read that book, watched that movie, seen that TV show, been to that park, whatever? Okay, how many times have you experienced that potential subject? How much do you know about the potential subject, both based on your own experience and based on what you've heard outside of your own experience about that subject? Okay. Third, what are some memorable things about your potential subject? Something that would grab people's attention, something that you can point out over the course of your evaluation that is a point of interest. Uh, if you recall in the lecture, I mentioned the giant statues at the Pop Century Resort in uh, Orlando. Uh, something that I would mention in evaluation of that or of that resort. And then uh, fourth, into what category would you police your potential subject? So this ties into creating the criteria for your evaluation. Okay, uh, placing it into a category with other similar subjects. Okay, so if it's like a hotel review, you're going to compare it against other hotels uh, in probably a similar price range. Uh, if you're evaluating it as like a piece of media, you're going to be evaluating against similar media. That is, say, this uh, similar subject matter, uh, definitely uh, in the same medium as what you're reviewing, but also uh, similar subject matter, similar genres, things like that. Uh, you read over the responses to your questions and compose a list of criteria for the category of each potential subject to compare them against. Okay. So this is mainly for that fourth topic, okay? You're going to look at your responses, and then you're going to come up with your criteria, uh, how you are going to rate quality uh, within that category, and then how does the subject that you've chosen uh, rate in terms of those criteria and their quality, okay? <clears throat> uh, next part, evaluating subjects. From the Journal writing, you should be able to choose a good subject for your evaluation. Uh, so basically, you have to look over what you've written in the journal now. Look at the experience you've had with each subject. The more experience you have, the more prepared you are to evaluate it. Okay? 
Second, look at the list of criteria for each subject. A more detailed, more in-depth list of criteria will make for a better evaluation. But not criteria so impossible that nothing could ever meet them. But remember, we're looking for good, not perfect. Okay. Uh, don't want anything, any standards that are so high that it's impossible to reach. All right. Uh, also, one thing in regards to topics, uh, I've I've actually had people ask me. Uh, Sending me emails asking me, is it are these good topics? Uh, at least one. It has to be something that can be evaluated. At least one person sent me a potential topic, which was uh, effects of smoking and drinking on the human body. Uh, that's not really a good evaluation topic, as much as that's more of an exploratory or possibly an argument essay. Uh, it's not really an evaluation. You're not evaluating anything. You're just giving a report on this is how bad this stuff is for you. <clears throat> okay, so uh, you want to have something that you can produce an opinion of that people may be able to debate, may be able to disagree with, okay? Uh, something that's going to be subjective in nature. <clears throat> uh, read over the experiences you've had with each subject. In your judgment, would they be interesting to an audience, and who would your audience be, okay? So think about what you've experienced with that subject, what you've seen with it, how do you think that's going to affect your audience? Uh, is, are they going to get the same impact out of it that you did? Okay, that's the main thing that we're asking about here. <clears throat> All right, next part here was the evaluations passed. We're going to take a look at a few evaluation examples so you can pick up on any elements that may be useful for your own. Okay, now this is a, uh, this, this is a, uh, all done in the uh, uh, video lecture, so I'm not going to actually do this with you. I'm just going to do a quick overview of the articles. Uh, in, the le in the video lecture, if you watched it, you know that I read these articles to you guys. Uh, if you still need the articles, uh, you can get them from the slideshow. The links are in the slideshow. <clears throat> okay. So these evaluations were from both regular people and from prominent writers. Uh, and I asked you guys to post your reactions uh, to these uh, evaluations to the discussion board uh, in the topic I created for it. Thus far, I have received four responses to this, OK? Uh, but we're going to take a quick look at uh, all the articles uh, that I asked you guys to take a look at, starting with the first one. <clears throat> so this is an evaluation of Six Flags Great Adventure. Uh, in New Jersey, the evaluator is a fellow named Joel, who's evaluating for Coaster Critic, uh, which is a, uh, uh, a, a theme park blog. Uh, jo uh, this is a blog posting. Joel gives numerical scores to the overall atmosphere, the individual rides and attractions, and a rating called the Get Over Here Index. Okay, so that is his overall rating on the park. All right. Uh, and it's a little bit more clinical than what you're typically used to for an evaluation, but uh, he does have certain criteria that he's looking to meet, uh, and he's telling you whether the park meets and the rides meet those criteria or not. Uh, next article, The Contradictions by Sophie Yano. Uh, this is a graphic novel being evaluated by Telka Lahochi for uh, NPR. Okay, uh, This is a standard book review. Uh, that Lahochi does. Lahochi reviews a graphic novel using the conventions of young adult and new adult literary fiction. Uh, I misspoke in the lecture and said that she really wasn't using graphic novels. She actually is uh, as a comparison point for this book. Uh, but the graphic novels she's using are not the ones that you're probably most familiar with. They're not like regular comic books. They're actually from within this genre of uh, personal autobiographical graphic novels. Okay especially ones about uh, teenagers and young adults. Uh, the next uh, evaluation was for a television show uh, for two episodes of Steven Universe from the AV Club. The evaluator's name is Eric Thurm. Uh, the format for this is a web television review. Thurm reviews two pivotal episodes of Steven Universe by recapping the events that occur in the episodes and analyzing the quality of the shows against other episodes and similar programming. Each episode gets a letter grade. Okay, uh, I will say I read the responses I've gotten thus far. 
and the people who uh, looked at the uh, Seething Universe re uh, evaluation uh, may have been under the impression that this was the first time Thurm had actually watched the show. Uh, that's the uh, that is the impression that I got from the uh, write-ups that I've received thus far. Uh, I should clarify here: the AV Club's uh, TV Club section uh, assigns a reviewer to do entire seasons of a show. It's just that they are getting the episodes as the audience is getting them and uh, posting their reviews in real time. Okay, so uh, Therm up to this point had had seen the rest remainder of the season up to those two episodes. Okay, so he was familiar with the show. Uh, I think he was also uh, the second reviewer that they had assigned to this. Uh, he came out, I think, for season three. Uh, they, the problem being was that the, the show had such a sporadic uh, airing schedule that it was hard to keep staff on it. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so uh, that's that review. And then the last, the last two were two uh, movie reviews by Armand White, uh, written for National Review. Okay, uh, you may remember me talking about uh, Armand White in the lecture. He is the contrarian critic who goes, typically goes against what every other critic on Rotten Tomatoes does, says about movies. Uh, so the two reviews that I gave you were examples of him doing exactly that. Okay, uh, for films that have pretty strong uh, one way or the other Rotten Tomato scores. Okay, so in this case he had the uh, evaluation of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, which on Rotten Tomatoes has a score of 97% positive. Uh, Armand White uh, did not like it. He gives a negative review to it. Uh, the second one was a dual review for two movies. One was for Assassin's Creed. Uh, the score of Rotten Tomatoes is 18%. That counts in the Rotten category. Uh, Armand White liked it. Okay, And then the movie Silence. Okay, Rotten Tomatoes rates it at 83%, which is considered to be fresh or really good. White did not like Silence. Okay, so he reflects negative review for Silence, a positive review for Assassin's Creed in that one article. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, just real quick, I want to go over uh, some of the responses I have received from this. Uh, I'm going to try to check this against who all is here. I'm not going to. The, even though these are public, I'm not going to read them off in this. Uh, if you're here, I'm not going to read them off without your permission. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Let's see who all is here. Uh, the four anonymous callers, if you're one of the people who posted, uh, let me know. Just go ahead and tell me if you were one of the ones who posted. No. Was that a no? No. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and read through all the responses I've gotten for it. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and share this window so you can see along with me uh, what people were writing about these. Okay. So let me bring that up. Professor Martinez, I'm having problems um, being able to view you know, everything. Well, don't don't worry about it because I'm gonna read I'm gonna read them aloud anyway. Okay. okay. If you okay. if you can hear me, I I know you're on the phone. You probably don't have a uh, video, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be reading them aloud anyway. I'm just bringing them up so that the folks with the with video access can see them at the same time. Okay. 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 All right. So uh, here is the uh, first thing that uh, first post there. Uh, Joel Criteria was amusement park, different rides available. He did good in reviewing the park in general, but it was unfortunate that in some rides he could not ride them. If he had been able to ride them, it would give the reader more confidence to go on the ride. He did do a good job in posting photos and videos because some things like rides, people need to see how big they are. That way they can decide to get on it or not. The Telka Criteria is in education, mainly college, living in another country. I think her best review points more of that not everyone has the same opportunity to go abroad and not everyone will experience the best of what studying abroad has to offer. But she makes readers to think twice about it because it is a hit or miss in getting the best experience. The bad point would be her review mainly sounded negative, which could impact others' decision in going abroad. Not everyone will have negative outcomes. There are chance some people may get lucky. 
Overall, she ends well in reminding us that in life, not everything is easy, and we have to put effort in order to make it through. Uh, Eric's criteria is TV show. Since it is the first time he watches the show, he has showed t- so much detail about both episodes that for those who have not watched the show, it helps the person reading the review easier understanding what show is about. The only negative is that the review is pretty long, so people might be overwhelmed. Armand White criteria is about films. It sounded like the review was becoming political, which can cause controversy, and the review should be less political, which is one of the bad points, and it sounded like it was his opinion. His review needs to be more about the film, and he should just focus on that. All right, one thing I want to point out here is the use of criteria here. They're not using the, crit- the term criteria correctly, as I have tried to point out, okay? Uh, the criteria for... Uh, the review is what standards they're using to rate the subject. It's not the subject itself, okay? And on top of that, for the uh, uh, review, uh, this particular poster did not even seem to get the point that the review was about a graphic novel and not about the experience of traveling abroad, okay? <clears throat> so let's take a look at the next one. Uh, Joel. This was a fairly average and unbiased review. Complaints are objective and reasonable given the example of the racing coaster and how only one track was being run. There being a roller coaster with wooden tracks feeling unstable and unsafe, with the, which is valid given the fact that people do not do want to feel safe while still having fun. People want to make sure their appropriate safety measures are being taken while going to these places. Unfortunately, the rides he was not able to ride did not make it a comprehensive review, but overall, the objective. Itelka, this review is really just based on the reality of the very few college students that get the opportunity to study abroad. The review is not really objective since it portrays abroad student experiences in a negative light. Okay, once again, this this particular poster uh, did not see that the review was not about the experience of studying abroad. Not about that. So she's comparing it to graphic novels. She's not trying to review the fact that she's going abroad. Okay. Uh, Eric, as a first-time viewer, the reviewer did a great job. I personally was able to understand the plot given the fact that I've only heard about the show a few times since I haven't actually watched it before. If the reader is able to get over the multiple characters and what's going on, this would be considered a good review. Uh, Armand, the review didn't really seem pertain to the actual movie, but societal issues, stereotypes, and politics that have no business being associated with such a child-friendly movie. All right. So here we go to the uh, next review, or the uh, next uh, post. Okay. Joel's criteria were Six Flags Great Adventures. Actually, he emphasizes in the website of the Coaster Critic. Basically, he tries to describe the advantage of places, especially the families and singles, who try to go there and spend some time on the vacations. For example, for those who try to go there for fun to spend their time on the vacations, they usually don't need to worry about anything specific like public transportation usually. The fair places offer different transportations to go one place to another is to save the people's money as well as to make it easy for the people to switch another place since the places are so large area, sometimes especially in a hot temperature or heat daily day usually. It makes people around there tired to switch to other places. Also in the last Joel post, some related pictures, videos, and the peoples who are comment the rate and rate the places on the website regards the fair is to show the peoples who like to do the review and the website is planning to visit that places are to show them that the fair has a variety of things and places to have fun, relax, and spend some great happy moments that are will be a highlight in the memories with the families as well. It's something to demonstrate to others place is clean as well as it's 100% guaranteed that the place and all the playing things in the fair, such as transportations and others are safe, inspected in good quality to use it, especially who's trying to choose that place fair is to spend some time in their yearly vacations. According to the criteria of Itelka Lahoji, the contradictions NPR, actually she tries to detail to the reader about the specific situation to go to another country to have an education. Basically it represents her story as an international student who comes to another country in order to have a good skill education or succeed in life. Also, she described that in her story that some people were usually affordable to study abroad and also some of the students, especially when the college is over, they're just shutting down their own country back and forth. Also, at the end of her story, I personally feel something bad in some of the sentences in the story as she really recommends to those who are in the lower class to think twice in order to study abroad the country because sometimes the students are so interested to study out of the country and spend a lot of their families and parents' amounts to study abroad the country and 
Sometimes it's racing for those students in order to fail in the education or succeed since most of them have really significant issues about to collect and follow the course and sometimes it makes them fail at the end of the semester caused by simple mistakes in the course. She didn't really mean that to not decide to go study abroad the country, but she tries to recommend for those who are low income level is to think twice to have an education abroad the country since it's something high in their life in order to succeed in educations. The Eric Therm criteria are mainly about the TV shows, which are known as Steven Universe, the AV Club. Actually, he's so fans of that TV shows, like usually he watches and keeps a track of every single that has been releasing by that shows. Since he's a big fan of that TV show, he usually he does share a story about those TV shows, and he shares the experience of how some types of TV shows that he usually watches is contains some typical advantage and disadvantage to those who like to watch that shows like Eric Thurm. It basically, in an easier way, it means that he evaluating some sort of the things in each episode of that shows by comparison and contrast each situation of the current story that has been shown in each Armand White's criterion is all about the movie reviews, which are some parts he didn't fell the requirements are absolutely meet, so he individually decides to write a story based on his opinion throughout the movie. Also, I can truly say that Armand White sounds like he specifically in reviews is becoming politicized and may cause controversy in some tips in the movie. According to the story, I personally believe that the Armand Whites believe in his comments that they should be less political playing in order to win the seat, also in evaluating all the specific details in the story. Basically, it's something the one of the disadvantage that the Armand Whites has been described in the story as well as it's something really specific that the Armand Whites has been sounded whether to like his views and be commented to change the situations throughout the movies. Okay, then. Uh, then we have the last post. Okay, this is, this is the last one thus far. Uh, Joel Standard was the amusement park and many varieties of rides available. He did great evaluating the park, but it was disappointing to see that some of the rides he was not able to enjoy. However, if he had the opportunity to ride them, it would give the people a reason to go on the ride. In other words, persuasion. It was smart that Joel put the pictures and videos because it will provide a sense of excitement and curiosity to the people. A Telka Standard has to do with education, mainly college, and living in another country. In my opinion, her great review points are that not everyone has the same opportunity to go overseas and not everyone will experience the good of learning abroad. This reasoning makes the audience think about their decision because it will be a 50-50 chance in getting the best experience abroad has to offer. The worst point is that she is mainly speaking negatively about the topic which can influence other people's decisions to go out the country, likewise knowing that every experience won't be negative. However, she does end her message on a positive note. Eric Standard is a TV show. And since this is the first time he watches the show, he has exposed so many details about both episodes that for the people who have not gotten a chance to see it, they can read the review and get an understanding of what the message of the show is. The only critique is the time of the video, which can overwhelm or turn many people off or away. Armand White Standard is about movies or films, and his evaluation was sounding and becoming more political as he went on, which can cause some tension from the audience. The review should be more on topic and about the movie than on anything else. Okay, so... Uh, here's the main thing that I'm getting from these four responses. First off, uh, Italka Lahochi is not reviewing uh, the experience of attending college abroad. She is reviewing a graphic novel about that topic. Okay, so any opinions that she has about uh, studying abroad are used to enhance that particular evaluation and not as the evaluation itself. Okay. Second, the criteria and the subject are not the same, okay? Uh, some people are saying the criteria is amusement park, the criteria is a movie, okay? That's, that's the basis of what the subject is, but that's not the criteria. The criteria is what standards that particular evaluator is using to hold those subjects against uh, in order to uh, evaluate what the... Uh, quality of that subject is. All right, so uh, make sure that you have an understanding. The subject is and the criteria are not the same thing. The subject is what's being evaluated. The criteria is what you are evaluating that against. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so uh, to give you a better idea on this and try to illustrate the uh, criteria, uh, we are going to go back one week here, and I'm going to have you guys, we're going to take a look at the EMP article. And this one I am going to read to you guys. So uh, let me bring it up here. I just need to 
I just need to share the screen. What am I doing? So I'm sharing that one. Let's share a different one. Okay. There. <clears throat> All right. So if you uh, if you downloaded the EMP from uh, eCampus, this is what it opens up to. Okay, very first image here. And this is for EMP Music History or Music Trivia by Jackie Wingard. Okay. Now, once again, I am going to read this article to you guys. Uh, and once I'm done with it, I'm going to actually point out how she uses her, her criteria. Uh, actually, how she's going to state her criteria and uh, how she compares the uh, uh, experience to that criteria. So there we go. Along with other college students new to Seattle, I wanted to see what cultural opportunities the area offers. I especially wanted to see billionaire Paul Allen's controversial experience music project known as EMP, a huge, bizarre, shiny, multicolored structure that is supposed to resemble a smash guitar. Brochures say that EMP celebrates the creativity of American popular music, but it has prompted heated discussion among architects, Seattle residents, museum goers, and music lovers who have questioned its commercialism and the real value of its exhibits. My sister recommended this museum to me because she knows I am a big music lover and a rock and roll fan. Also, as an active choir member since the sixth grade, I have always been intrigued by the history of music. I went to EMP expecting to learn more about music history from exhibits that showed a range of popular music styles, that traced historical connections and influences, and that enjoyably conveyed useful information. However, uh, the Museum of Rock History, EMP is a disappointing failure. EMP claims that it covers the history of rock and roll from its roots to the styles of today but it fails at this task because it isolates musicians and styles without explaining historical progressions or cultural influences. For instance, the museum doesn't show how Elvis Presley's musical style was influenced by his predecessors like Chuck Berry and Muddy Waters. It doesn't show how early folk and blues influenced Bob Dylan's music. It doesn't show how early jazz paved the way for rock and roll. How are these isolated and separate EMP exhibits connected? How did rock and roll progress from the 50s Let's Go to the Hop Beats to the laid back guitar riffs of the 60s and 70s? How did 70s music become the heavy metal headbanger rock of the 80s and 90s? How did these styles lead to rap? The exhibits show the existence of these different styles, but they don't help viewers understand the historical developments or historical context. While it is interesting to see a peace patch once owned by Janis Joplin, this exhibit does not explain either the social and political events of the time or Joplin's political views. Another fault of EMP is that it omits many influential groups of musicians, particularly women. For example, there is no display about the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, or the Doors. The exhibits also exclude many major female artists who made substantial contributions to popular music. I found nothing about Joan Baez, Ella Fitzgerald, Aretha Franklin, Carly Simon, or Joni Mitchell. I was also surprised that there were few women mentioned in the Northwest Passage exhibit. Weren't more women involved in the Seattle music scene? As a woman interested in music, I felt left out by MP's overall neglect of women musicians. Perhaps most frustrating about EMP is the way exhibits are explained through the awkward difficulties handheld computer called the Museum Exhibit Guide, or MEG. The explanations are hard to access and then disappointing in their content. I wanted to hear a landmark song that an artist wrote or an interesting analysis of the artist's musical style. Instead, I listened to How Elvis Made the Leather Jacket Famous and other random trivia. The MEG also offers too many choices for each exhibit, like a web page with a dozen links. But after all the time and effort, you learn nothing that increases your understanding or stimulates your thinking about music history. The megs themselves are very heavy, clunky, and inconvenient. If you don't point this gadget exactly at the activator, nothing happens. It took me a good 10 minutes to figure out how to get the device to play information for me. And many of my classmates had to keep going back to the booth to get new batteries or other repairs. The museum would be much more effective if visitors had the option of just reading about the displays from plaques on the wall. I know that many people will disagree with my assessment of EMP. They'll point to the fun of the interactive exhibits and the interesting collection of album covers, crushed velvet costumes, concert clips, famous guitars, and old jukeboxes. But a good museum has to be more than a display of artifacts and an array of hands-on activities. Pretending you're a rock star by performing on stage with instruments doesn't tell you how a certain style of music came about. Displaying trivial information about Elvis's leather jacket or Janis Joplin's feathered boa doesn't help you appreciate the importance of their music. Devoting half an exhibit to punk rock without any analysis of that style doesn't teach you anything. 
and short the museum displays frivolous trivia tidbits without educational substance. Music lovers hoping for an educational experience about the rock and roll era of musical history will be disappointed by EMP. And this is without the additional insult of having to shell out 1995 to get in the door. Speaking for serious music lovers and students of music history, I have to say that EMP is a failure. All right, now the main thing I want to talk about with this was the criteria that uh, Wingard uses. And this will actually illustrate for you what I'm talking about here. Uh, so obviously her subject is the EMP, the subject is a museum, okay? Here is her criteria. It's actually explicitly stated in the second to last sentence of the introductory paragraph. I went to EMP expecting to learn more about music history from exhibits that showed a range of popular music styles that traced historical connections and influences and that enjoyably conveyed useful information. That's her criteria right there. Okay? She's judging it against other museums uh, and specifically their exhibits. Okay? She has three standards for the criteria for museum exhibits. One has to show a range of popular music styles. Okay? compared to any other musical uh, museum that you see out there. Uh, I, the obvious comparison would be the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay? Uh, but that's one thing that she wants out of this experience is uh, exhibits need to show a range of popular music styles. Then the exhibits have to trace historical connections and influences. Okay? Uh, it's trying to, they have to be informative. And then they have to enjoyably convey useful information. So it has to be something that you can enjoy, and the information has to be something useful, something that's pertinent. Okay? And in her opinion, the EMP does none of that. Okay? So that uh, is what I mean when I'm talking about criteria. You are actually looking for how you're going to judge your subject, as opposed to just saying the criteria is the subject that's being evaluated. Okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up to uh, questions here. Uh, I'm going to give you two options on what you, and if you want to, uh, you can also, uh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll go about five minutes for questions here, then we'll take some time if anybody wants to share their impressions of uh, the five evaluations from the uh, video, uh, from the video lecture, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and uh, open it up. Uh, raise your hand if you have a question, and I'll uh, let you shoot it, shoot it at me. I have a question. Yes. So, so I see on on the blackboard the instructions. Instructions say not to use words like like I me or you your. So like it can't be like have to be don't can't be as Opinion, opinionated as possible. Yes. Like it can't can't be uh, can't use <clears throat> I or anything like that. Like. Yeah, you can, can include you an I. You can. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. uh, the evaluation is going to be subjective in nature. It's going to be your opinion. So, by all means, you can use the I. Okay, but you can't say me or my or you know what I'm You you can do that. Oh, okay. I, that's the same because there was there was uh, instructions on Blackboard. I said you couldn't use words. What kind of words on there? Yeah, the, disregard that. That's stuff that uh, that's automatic text that I didn't bother to delete. It's when I uh, import the uh, class uh, framework. Okay, somebody oh. came up with instructions for this stuff already, and they're not instructions that I really agree with. Okay, thanks. So we don't. So we don't have to worry about the you or your type of thing? Uh, if, you're tr if you're just trying to illustrate, like, this is what you do, if, it's, if you're uh, doing an evaluation of some kind of experience, uh, then yeah, you or your, that's okay. Yeah, Jed, I see you there. What's your question? Um, so for this evaluation argument, um, are we allowed to write movie? Are we, are we allowed to do movie reviews? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes, thanks. absolutely. Uh, the only, the main thing I would say is avoiding a topic like I mentioned earlier. The one person tried to, why well, asked me if a good topic would be the effects of drugs and alcohol on the human body. 
Uh-oh. And that, okay. something like that is not something that you that's really an evaluation. That's more along the lines of an argument slash research paper. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, if you want to do if you want to do a movie, that's fine uh, because that's something that can be done. How did I see you there? What's your question? Yes, my question is that the, for our evaluation essay, like, can we write, like, for example, is it like for new homeowners to buy at home in Dallas, or like to choose in another county to buy the home, something specific like that? Can we choose the, like that kind of topic to do the evaluation essay? You can, as long as you can come up with some good criteria for it. Uh, if you can come up with some kind of criteria for uh, the uh, where would be a good place to uh, purchase a home or something like that? That sounds like what you're talking about. Uh, if, include if you with can the find, evidence, include with the evidence, right? Yeah, your your criteria is going to be what you're what you're specifically looking for in the area that you want to buy in. Mm-hmm. Okay, then you use the evidence to show whether that area meets that criteria or not. Hello, Professor. Yes. I wanted to know, um, would would it be okay if I could um, choose a topic on um, crime during during the pandemic? Or no? Or scams or so, or something like that? That's not. Well, uh, crime rates during the pandemic. That's not really an evaluation. That's more of a research paper. Okay. Oh, so not even. Uh, What we're looking for. I'm sorry, what? Not even if it's resolving scams or something of that sort or No. I would I would not I would try to avoid that. Uh, okay. we wanna stick with some we wanna stick with something that you uh, both have experience with and also something that okay. lends itself to uh, some kind of quality. Okay. Some kind okay. of quality assessment. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have a question. Um, I wanted to know yeah. when is this uh, when is this due? All right. So next week is the revision workshop on this evaluation, uh, and then the week following is the proofreading and editing, and then the end of the following week is when it's going to be uh, due. Okay, and just so, kind of uh, you kind of just posted as a uh, discussion board, kind of like you showed us the examples or submitted as a word document. The final draft is submitted as a Word document. The stuff that gets posted to the discussion boards are your workshop drafts. Okay, and I would post that mm-hmm. to my group? Yes. Excellent. And uh, it can be just any evaluation of any uh, – like I, I like the example that you gave about the guy in the uh, – I guess it was the music uh, museum or whatever. Like I can just – I can evaluate anything I think is – just needs a problem. That has a problem that just needs to be fixed. Uh, you could you could do that uh, as long as you have some criteria to line it up against to show how it could be better. Okay, so give another example of how it could improve itself. Right, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, so we got about ten minutes left here, and. Uh, well, what I want to have you guys do is, if if you are feeling comfortable enough with it, uh, if you haven't posted already to uh, questions the professor with your assessments of the evaluation articles from the video lecture, uh, I wanted to give you guys a chance to voice your opinions on them right now. So uh, we'll go through them one by one here. Uh, I'm not going to uh, actually read them to you. Like I said, I did that in the lecture. Uh, so you, if you need some references, you can get them from the slideshow. Uh, then I'm going to bring up the uh, individual slides and let people uh, pre- give their opinions on these evaluations. Uh, now, again, granted, if you have already posted to the uh, uh, question of the professor, you don't really have to do this exercise. Okay, But anybody who hasn't, this would be a good opportunity to do this. 
Uh, so we'll start with the Six Flags Great Adventure va evaluation. Uh, does anybody have any thoughts on what they thought about this one? All right, moving on. Uh, let's go to the next one. Again, the, it seems like a lot of people posted had a little bit of confusion on the second one. Uh, the Contradictions by Tiffy Yano. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on this. Just, just keeping in mind that what is actually being reviewed here is a graphic novel, not the experience of uh, being a student in Europe or being a student abroad. <clears throat> All right, move on to the, set, the next one here, if anybody has any thoughts on it. This is the, uh, the Scene Universe review uh, from Eric Thurm. Uh, if anybody has any thoughts on that, go ahead and pipe up.
All right, we'll move on to the, lap, the last two here, the Armand White reviews. Uh, if anybody has any thoughts on these these two reviews, uh, go ahead and pipe up. All right. Let's see what we got here. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, open up any, any other questions anybody has uh, in regards to workshops, in regards to, uh, in regards to the evaluation, uh, anything like that. Um, I can tell you uh, as far as what to expect next week. Again, it is the revision workshop, and we're uh, next week's lecture is going to be primarily about workshopping. I have a question. Yes. Sir. So, um, anything anything you review, like, like when it comes to like reviewing TV shows or like some like entertainment like that, would you would it be the best to compare it to like other TV shows and like and like you know other TV shows and or like other video games if you're reviewing a video game or something? It would be it would be a good idea to have some frame of frame of reference. Now the thing is, you don't actually have to mention what you're using as a frame of reference. You can basically just do uh, generalized criteria based on what makes your frame of reference good versus whatever it is that you are uh, evaluating. Okay. All right.
All right, folks. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, let you guys uh, go here. Uh, again, next week we're going to be doing uh, stuff about workshopping, make sure everybody's on the same page as far as what's expected. Uh, we will be doing a revision workshop on the evaluation and essays, so make sure that you have uh, some work done on that by next week. Uh, you should at least have a topic and should have some basic writing done. Uh, we need to have some something to present to your groups in order to uh, workshop. All right, so uh, go, guys, go ahead and work on that. We will have another one of these sessions next Thursday uh, at the same time. Uh, and continue working on everything else, including discussion boards and MindTap uh, stuff. Uh, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you very much for coming.